What's going on guys? It's your boy Sunny and today I'm going to be talking about the top 5 productivity hacks that I wish someone had told me before I started this journey as a developer. Let's jump into it. In this video, we're going to be doing something different to what you're typically seeing on YouTube for your productivity tips and tricks videos. This video is going to be all about how you can maximize the return on the time that you're investing in your passion or the thing that you're trying to build up, whether it be your software development career path, whether it be you trying to start a company, whether it be you just trying to pursue a passion that you've always wanted to pursue. This video is all about things that you can incorporate in your day-to-day -day life to go ahead and help you maximize maximize the return for the time that you're putting into these things. So these are all things that I have done which have drastically improved my life and my situation and hopefully will be different to what you're used to seeing and therefore will be useful to you. So hopefully if you enjoy this video smash the thumbs up button and let me know in the comment section down below what your favorite part was. Let's jump into this. So my first and probably one of the most important productivity hacks is simply time management. In particular we're going to talk about a technique that I love to share with our students and it's called the Pomodoro Technique. So what is the Pomodoro Technique? You work in short, intense, 20 minute work intervals. Now in this 20 minutes, you're not allowed to do anything besides focus on that one specific task at hand. And then after 20 minutes, you have a five minute break where you're not allowed to work. So in that five minute break, you're not allowed to do any work. This is where you can check your phone. This is where you can do whatever you need to do. Go to the bathroom. You can go ahead and have some food. But once that five minutes is over, you repeat the cycle and then you go back into your 20 minute time intervals. So that will equal one Pomodoro. You want to repeat this four times and then you have a long break of 30 minutes. This is typically where I would go ahead and eat or I would have a little bit of a water break. Now you can go ahead and grab any Pomodoro timer off the internet. There is loads of apps. I actually used an app for this. Pretty much you can just go ahead and you know hit the sort of number of sessions that you wanna have and this timer will just continuously run 20 minutes, five minutes. Some people I know do 25 minutes and sometimes 10 minute break and then try and hit eight Pomodoros a day to begin with. And remember, track that number and measure it and watch how productive you start to become. So another thing that I actually teach my students is something called plan today tomorrow and what this simply is is before you go to sleep every day I do it on an app called Notability and what I will simply do is I will write down my goal for tomorrow okay so my little bit of a breakdown of what I want to achieve tomorrow now this is something which every single point on that list should not be a generic it shouldn't be I want to get fit I want to get healthy there's nothing tangible there so let's think about my to-do list for example so tomorrow I'll probably write something like I want to shoot a lesson for my course, right? That's going to be one of the tasks. I want to go to the gym for a one hour session. That's going to be another task. It's going to be go for a walk, listen to an audio book. That's an example of how you can break down this list. And what it does is you then wake up with purpose, right? Most of the time we wake up, we don't really have a desired goal. And then that allows us to procrastinate. It allows our, you know, that part of our brain which just wants to mess around all day. It allows that to take rain and we don't end up getting anything done. Now I've been using this app called Structured and I'm gonna give you a quick demo. And what this app does really well is it shows your entire breakdown in a nice UI. So what it does is you can go ahead and add in the different tasks that you are gonna do for that day. And then what's really nice is it tells you the exact number of minutes that you have between now and the next task. This was an eye opener for me. So when I was originally doing this off of the top of my head, I would typically waste so much time but not realize. Now remember guys, everybody has 24 hours in a day. So you just need to work out how to optimize that time but enjoy the process while you do it. Now structured is a really nice way of doing this. All you need to go ahead and do is add in your tasks and it will give you the amount of time between each different task so that if you want to go ahead and then fit in a little extra task in between them, you can do so and see it very clearly. Incredible app. I really do recommend it and I will go ahead and link it in the description below. So number two on the list is the law of 33%. Now this was actually by Ty Lopez during one of his TED talks and this really resonated with me. The rule is 
is simple. Imagine your time is divided into three chunks. 33% of your time should be spent with students who are lower than you in terms of skill level. These are typically students which you're teaching. Remember guys, to have a student of your own, you don't need to be so far ahead. You just need to be a step ahead of them. So whether it's playing an instrument, teaching a bit of code, teaching a language, it can be anything you need to do as long as you are one step ahead of someone else, it's gonna allow you to really level up because in order to teach something, you need to know that thing inside out. The second 33% is spending it with people who are going to become your friends and your peers. Now, this is people who are on the same level as you. So what do I mean by this? This is gonna be your colleagues. This is gonna be your friend circle. Now, what you need to be careful about in surrounding yourself with the correct friend circle, you need to go ahead and actually find friends who are challenging themselves, who are pushing their boundaries. This goes the same for your colleagues. If you find that your job is becoming stagnant, then it's time for you to literally look for a new challenge. Now, the final 33% percent is probably I would say the most important 33 percent this is where you need to surround yourself with somebody who is at least 10 times ahead of where you are in terms of skill in terms of career in terms of progression this is massively a reason as to why I was able to fast track my career as a developer because whenever I went into a job or whenever I went into a different freelancing environment I would immediately search around for the developers who were you know ahead of the game they were super senior they were running stuff at that place and I would immediately try and shadow them try and become friends with them now what do you do if you can't you're not in a job environment you're not in that kind of situation where you have access to these mentors what you can do is you can listen to audible you can listen literally read a book it doesn't mean that you always have to be next to that person or in physically in the presence of that person just by consuming that knowledge means i like to listen to my books i can't focus on the page for too long so i like to listen to it when i'm out for a walk or when i'm driving and then i feel like i absorb the information really well so a book that i would really recommend is called 10x by grant cardone and it brings basically teaches you to set your goals at 10x their original level and that means that even if you fall short of your goal you're probably going to go ahead and exceed what you originally would have done if you hadn't have done that anyway now that was just by purely following that one third rule that I picked up that audiobook so there is a link to the description if you want to find out more about that book now the third productivity hack that I would recommend is keeping your brain active and constantly learning a new skill. This is incredibly important. Now, what do I mean by learning a new skill? It could be simply extending your knowledge of current topics that you love and know about. So for example, something like understanding the basics of React and the fundamentals of React and really pushing your knowledge. Now, this perfectly leads me to today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions of people come together to take the next step in their creative journey. The thing I love about Skillshare is that there are no ads. They're always launching new premium classes and they also recommend really interesting classes. So before you know it, I'm actually no longer watching TV or Netflix. All I do is watch Skillshare while I'm actually eating my food. Most classes are under 60 minutes, so they should be able to fit any schedule, whether you're super busy or you've got a little bit more time on your hands. I've actually gone ahead and dropped the React Basics 101 entire class on Skillshare. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description are gonna get a free month worth of premium premium Skillshare and you're going to be able to with that access the React Basics which I've uploaded. On top of that you're going to get access to thousands and thousands of courses available on Skillshare's platform. I've actually been checking out a amazing video editing class at the moment by Ali Abdel where I was actually able to find out how I could use my iPad to add animated handwriting into my videos to level up my production value and now I'm making the best use out of my iPad as well as leveling up my Final Cut production game. So this is is just an example of the amazing value that I've got since I've signed up at Skillshare and if you guys want to go ahead and benefit from this just like I have then go ahead and remember the first 1,000 people to go ahead and grab that link are going to get one free month of Skillshare premium which means that you can access my React Basics 101 class it's completely free you have nothing to lose and then after that you can go ahead and continue if you're enjoying what you see on Skillshare. Now number four on the list is to stop handling 
the journey alone. What do I mean by stop handling the journey alone? I, as a developer, when I was learning, got into situations where I would be debugging the hardest problems, right? I would be stuck for days, for weeks, even for months sometimes. And I just feel like I'd start doubting myself. I'd start, you know, thinking, am I cut out for this? Am I clever enough to be a coder? And let me know in the comments right now if any of you have experienced this. But I guarantee if you're learning how to code, you've run into these walls. Now, the thing I wish I learned before was just join a community because you are not the only one who's experiencing this problem. And this is why I've introduced and built Zero to Full Stack Hero, our amazing course and community inside the Papa fam. Link is in the description if you want to check it out. Our community is 350 strong and we are an absolute positive, productive place. We all work together. We all push up the boundaries on our development careers. How many times have we been on Stack Overflow and you just feel scared to go ahead and, you know, send a reply or send a question into a Stack Overflow forum because you just feel like you're going to get judged. The secret to going ahead and overcoming those hurdles and accelerating your growth as a developer is actually amazing techniques like pair programming. Pair programming is where two developers or even more come together and they basically code together. And this is incredible because what happens when you're pair programming is that when you get stuck on those walls that you typically will hit, the other developer often sees the small mistakes that you will overlook and vice versa. Now, you have an amazing friend that you're building a relationship with as well as leveling up your software development game. Now this is something that I'd recommend for everyone who is getting into coding. We actually have a Discord community as well. There is a link in the description that you can go ahead and jump into. Now it's not just about coding when you want to become a successful developer. You need to have the correct social skills and we call this the soft skills. Okay so this means like how you value yourself as a developer, how you communicate to an employer that you're actually a good developer, right? How you lead a team, how you get somebody to trust you, how you actually go ahead and persuade somebody that you can build a website that they would love, right? All of this is known as soft skills and an incredible book which taught me so much about this is John Sommez's Soft Skills. Now I'm going to go ahead and show it on the screen right here but you can go ahead and actually get that book in the description below. I'll include an, a little link. It is an affiliate link so by going through that link it will support the channel and I massively appreciate that but definitely check that one out because because that book changed the game for me in terms of how I was able to negotiate huge pay rises when I was jumping from job to job simply by changing the way I valued myself and how I was communicating with others in a team. And number five, the final productivity hack is to go ahead and start a side hustle. Now you're probably wondering, Sunny, that's not a productivity hack. Now trust me when I say this, by challenging yourself and pushing yourself to extremes, you're gonna be pushing yourself way harder and faster than you ever thought was possible. Let's go ahead and break this down. What side hustles can you start right now? Well, you can go ahead and start your own YouTube channel. Remember, try and follow a niche. So whether it's teaching somebody how to play the guitar, teaching singing, teaching programming, but this is gonna force you to level up in your video editing skills in your actual skills that you are trying to teach. Because remember, when you need to teach something, you need to know that topic inside out and you'll quickly realize that the things that we thought we knew, we actually don't know much about. Do not be afraid that it's not perfect, because remember, the more quantity that you're actually releasing, your quality will naturally evolve and it will naturally come to a point where your videos are getting better and better and better. Eventually, it's a very nice little side income where you can go ahead and convert your side income, which is just starts off to be a fun passion or a fun hobby, into an actual living, which will then go ahead and take that financial pressure off of you. The more typical side hustles include things like freelancing. Freelancing is an awesome way to make a side income and amazing websites like Upwork, Fiverr, and actually, believe it or not, LinkedIn. I actually received the majority of my jobs through social media, LinkedIn. Do not send spam messages which are copied and pasted. It never works. Nobody likes that. Instead, what I really recommend you do is craft out a really well thought message where you research the person you're trying to reach out to. Say to them that you can code. You have this ability to build websites. You can go ahead and offer your services 
services and maybe schedule a free consultation with them and before you know it guys you'll get a little bit of a bite and then you'll start your freelancing journey how does this tie into the productivity cycle when you have a deadline for a freelancing gig you will do whatever it takes to make that deadline you will work incredibly long hours you will put in a huge amount of effort because you have a pressure behind you which is making you perform to a level that you just wouldn't have pushed yourself to otherwise so in my opinion that is the peak of productivity at that point and then before you know it you'll realize that you can push yourself to levels which you just didn't think that were possible once you make this money another thing which isn't spoke about in the developer community much is investing your money and i really recommend a book called rich dad poor dad i'm going to show it on the screen right now and the link for that is going to be in the description but that book pretty much showed me that you can make your money work for you now how does that work right so by simply taking for example one thousand pounds and investing it into the stock market and by the way guys this is by no means professional financial advice this is just my opinion for what has worked for me and what i think could work for you i invest in something called reits now a reit stands for a real estate investment trust and they by law have to pay out a high percentage per year in dividend payments so let's say i have a thousand pound in a stock or a reit for example uh, i'll pop on the screen one that i invest in in the uk they pay around a seven to eight percent dividend yield and they pay out quarterly so what does this mean it means i'm going to get eight percent of that one thousand pounds paid to me in installments every single quarter and that means my money is now working for me and it will go ahead and it will make a nice little return far better than it would have had when it was sitting inside of a savings account if you do want to play a little bit more safe you can simply go ahead and take your money and put it inside of something called an index fund where you have for example if we go ahead and invest in the s p 500 it's going to be the average of 500 companies so if you're scared that one company might crash it's an average of 500 companies it shouldn't get too affected. So you're more safer in index funds as opposed to investing in an individual company. Again, this is not any professional financial advice. It's just my opinion for what has worked for me. Ever since I've started investing, my money has grown a huge amount as compared to if it just sat in a savings account. Now, all of these tips today, I hope have helped you in some way rethink about how you can be more productive. Now, if you have this question as to Sunny, but you mentioned a couple of things in this video, which I don't think were directly linked to productivity, then what I like to kind of throw as a counter argument is what is your definition of productivity? So in my opinion, being productive is doing the things I enjoy in the most efficient manner. So if I do X amount of work or X amount of time towards my passion, trying to maximize the value returned. And that is why I've spoken about how to invest uh, because it's going to help maximize the return from the time that you have invested in something. So it's not just about I've spent an hour working. It doesn't matter if you spent an hour working and you have nothing to show for it. It matters about if you spend an hour working and you have so much that you can state that you have got as a return for that one hour working, then you have essentially been productive in my opinion. So I hope this video has been interesting for you. If it has, smash the thumbs up button. I'd love to do more small, shorter form videos like this. And once again, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more content. I will be dropping more builds on this channel. I've got a really nice few crash courses as well that I'm gonna also be dropping. And once again, this is your boy Papa React, AKA Sunny, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.